Welcome to Wheeler Scientific. Suppose you are a dictator of a third world country and you want to produce uranium metal. A uranium compound with a good leaving element is needed. Most of the time that's fluorine, but most of the time fluorine is quite annoying to work with. Another great option is chlorine, which is where uranium tetrachloride steps in. It's a gorgeous green solid that serves many uses, such as the reduction to uranium metal. It can be produced in a few ways. Those ways require usually expensive equipment and have toxic byproducts. To get around this, we have spent two videos creating hexachloropropene. Using hexachloropropene, the reaction can be carried out on a hot plate at ambient pressures, making it achievable for most chemists. Before we begin, it's essential to mention that uranium is a toxic heavy metal that's also radioactive. Proper safety measures are ensured to keep me and the public safety. This is an educational video. If you want a more in-depth look on safety procedures and radiation detection, check out my uranium oxide video. We begin with 4 grams of uranium trioxide and add that to a 50 milliliter flask, along with a stir bar. Next, 10 milliliters, 1.71 grams of hexachloropropene is added. A reflux condenser is then connected to the reaction flask. A drying tube is then connected to the condenser. The flask is then lowered into a sand bath on a hot plate. Cooling is started along with stirring. The hot plate is slowly ramped up to 60 degrees Celsius and held at that temperature for an hour. A thermal reaction may occur at this point, which needs to be monitored and kept under 100 degrees Celsius to avoid a thermal runaway. The temperature is measured using a thermocouple directly on the reaction flask. A thermometer in the mix will be best here, but I do not have a small reaction flask with multiple necks. After an hour, the hot plate is slowly ramped up to 160 degrees Celsius and held for at least 6 hours allowing reflux. I had to head home so I let it run overnight. By the time I returned, over 12 hours had elapsed. The uranium trioxide disappears during this time and is replaced by a green material, the uranium tetrachloride. The reaction between uranium trioxide and hexachloropropene most likely produces hexachloride of uranium which then thermally decomposes forming the desired uranium tetrachloride. After the reaction completes, it's allowed to cool to room temperature. The reflux condenser is removed and rinsed into a fritted filter. Then the material in the reaction flask is transferred to a fritted filter. It took a few washes to transfer the material completely. The uranium tetrachloride is being washed with dry dichloromethane till the washes run clear. Next, the frit is placed into a vacuum desiccator and dried for an hour under vacuum. This will drive off any leftover organic volatile chemicals. These glass fritted filters are one of my favorite pieces of equipment for filtering. They allow filtering of very fine material with quite low losses. Once dry, I transfer the tetrachloride to a teared vial. Our final product is 5.142 grams of a dark green powder, yielding 96% of the theoretical yield. The yield was excellent, only 4% off of a 100% quantitative yield. I could have probably got a few more percents out of this yield due to me not wanting to scrape the inside of the flask and the stir bar. Scraping of fine uranium materials will dislodge it, creating contamination. So I just left those stuck to the fritted filter and the stir bar for cleanup later. Uranium halide compounds are very hydroscopic, uranium tetrachloride being no exception. It should be kept in a desiccator or in a glove box for storage. Moisture will react with the compound forming hydrated oxychlorides, defeating the whole purpose of all these steps. 
This method of producing anhydrous uranium tetrachloride is excellent for lab scale preparation of this important reagent. Easily obtained chemicals producing the uranium tetrachloride without a tube furnace is especially useful. Overall, the reaction is fascinating due to the use of an organic chlorinator for an inorganic chemical. All glassware was rinsed with nitric acid for cleanup, and the solvents were collected. Any wash from flushing the uranium tetrachloride was also collected. These rinses were evaporated and stored in a dedicated uranium wash bottle. It's essential to only use glassware for radioactive work with radioactive work. Having dedicated glassware and equipment prevents contamination. Thank you for watching to the end. If you want to support the channel, check out the Patreon link in the description below. If you want to talk about science, check out the Discord server link in the description below also. Thank you again for watching. The procedure is based on Peter Scott's chlorination of uranium oxide with hexachloropropene, with supporting information from the chemistry of the actinide elements, first edition, written by JJ and Seaboard GT, with supporting safety information courtesy of the trustees of Princeton University's handling of radioactive material.